Hello everyone, this is Tailspin19, and welcome back to Let's Play Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. In the last video, I finished the Hidden Palace with some difficulties. And now I'm at the Great Palace to get the Triforce of Courage. I got myself a game over off screen to replenish my lives here, because this is the one area in the game where if you get a game over, you actually start back here, in this dungeon. Which is very generous, but it wasn't by intention. It was based off of... Uh, limitation of the Famicom Disk System. You see, this dungeon had to be put on the second side of the disc. Meaning, the game had to start you here due to that reason alone. And they just carried over to the NES version, so thank goodness. Now, the Great Palace is a giant labyrinth. If you go the wrong way, you will get eternally lost. Thankfully, I figured out a good path to get through the Great Palace. Anytime you get to an intersection with an elevator, you need to go in this order. There's four you'll go through. First one is go left, two for numbers two and three, go right, and for the last one, go left. So I already did the first two elevators, so there we go. Ow. Even so, this is a long dungeon filled with many nasty enemies. Very nasty. I... I don't even like to fight some of the enemies in this dungeon, I just pass them by. Um, it's only a blue potion, so I'll just use a shield spell. I think we'll be introduced to one of these nasty enemies here. It's a jumping knight, an eagle knight. Definitely don't want to mess with them, I usually just run from them because I find them too hard to kill. There we go! Come on. Alrighty, there we go. Moving onward. Oh, we didn't encounter one in there. We'll encounter. Oh yeah, here they are. These guys, I just prefer to avoid entirely. I'll just run right through them and move on with my life. Except he really caught up to me that time. Wow, that was scary. Okay, whenever you see these kind of corridors, try and walk left along the wall, there's usually a little spot you can inch yourself into that holds a statue. Hopefully, it'll give you a red potion, but sometimes it'll throw on those eagle knights, so you just gotta keep trying until you get it, or if you run out of magic, which is a terrible case scenario. <laughs> Alright, we can ignore this one. And this is the third intersection, so we want to go right. I'm so glad I memorized this, it means I n never have to look at a map for this place. Now, if I'm doing a randomizer, I would love a map, but since it's a randomizer, there can't be a map because the entire layout is randomized. Ow. I should probably take care of these guys. Not working out so well. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna cast a life spell here. And a shield spell. Because I think there's an Eagle Knight in here. And I don't like him. But yeah, I'm not very good at killing them, so I don't even bother. They'll do me more harm than good. I, I've i never been able to really hit them before. And I'm most certainly not going to try now. Um, Alright, now I can go. Oh, magic. I would like a little magic, but I can't afford to get it. Oh well. Alright, another room. These has currents, but don't be fooled. This actually is not a boss room. Ow. Game past those guys without getting hurt can be quite difficult, but the downward thrust definitely helps to get past them. Uh oh. Hurry. See those giant bubbles? Yeah, they're quite intimidating looking, aren't they? But they're not too bad because they're pretty much always slow. Alright. Thank goodness these exist. I don't even know how I just stumbled upon it as a kid. I guess I was just desperate to hopefully find something good. That wasn't good this time. Try it again. Alright. Alright, cool, and we don't even have to use a life spell because there's actually a nearby fairy we can use. Very convenient. 
So let's go here first. Just a quick little detour. There we go. Safest way to get that. There we go. Okay, now we can keep moving onward. Fourth intersection, we go left. The big path taking is essentially over now. Isn't that wonderful? Ow. Stop! I just got a fairy, darn it. Alright, now we have to start looking for secret passages. There's one in here. It looks like a conspicuous dead end, but it actually does have a secret hole somewhere. I don't remember which one. There we go. Alright, now get your up thrust ready. The game throws a little trap at you. Alright, we've got another hole to go into here, but we gotta be careful about the bubbles. Well, they weren't a problem this time. Alright. I think that's actually it. Yeah, we're, we're at the end of the dungeon. See, if you memorize that little thing I say, left, right, right, left at the intersections, you'll be fine. Uh, let me equip a shield spell, and now we fight the first of two final bosses, Thunderbird. You need to cast the Thunder spell to be able to harm him. After that, he will move around the room in a type of zigzaggy vertical pattern, shooting down fireballs at you. What you want to do is try and stay on the lower platforms a bit to lower him down, and then try and get a hit in on him. I don't recommend using the jump spell, because that makes you more likely to actually run into the fireballs. It can take a bit of time though, but you want to be patient, because even with the shield spell, these fireballs hurt a lot. And I mean a lot. And you want to try and conserve your health, because once you get to the halfway point of this fight, we essentially enter phase two, and he starts attacking at a much faster rate of fire. See, look at this. It basically turns into a shmup of sorts, as you avoid all these fireballs. Ow. Oh, it's not going too well. There we go. And as you can see, even with magic at max level, the Thunder Spell still uses up half of eight magic containers. But there we go. That's one boss down, only one left to go. So this is going to be a very short video, actually. I didn't realize how short this dungeon was if you knew where to go. I thought even if you knew where to go, it took at least ten minutes. Anyways, here we are, final battle. Get your shield spell ready, and prepare to fight your dark self. Darkling, probably one of the most epic bosses on the NES catalog. Now, you kind of just have to figure out your own tricks to fight him. I usually just go crazy with jump stabs followed by crouching. Eventually it works. I don't have much help. Now, of course, there's also the obvious corner trick, but I'm not going to use that. I have three lives here. I'll manage. If I beat it on this life, though, I'll be impressed. Because I do not have a lot of health. No, I'm not going to do it this time. Yeah, I didn't think I'd do it that time. <laughs> But I still got two lives, I'm not worried. Famous last words. That didn't bode so well for me last time. I've got two life spells I can use though, so... I shouldn't be too shy about that. Here we go! Besides, I need to give you guys a more satisfying fight than ducking in the corner. Because, well, that's not very exciting. There we go. You need to trick him into dropping his defenses. Generally, after he lands, that's usually a pretty good time to get a hit in from a jump. Ah, he's doing pretty well. But yeah, he's very good at blocking your shots. He his shield defenses are the smartest in the game, and honestly, this is pretty impressive AI for the time. He has a lot of sneaky defensive tricks up his sleeve. Ah. Never in the proper end of- ooh, let me use another life spell. Alright. And any time you hit him... He loses a bar of health, so thankfully his defenses aren't the highest in terms of actual 
life defense. But just keep persevering and you'll eventually get him down. There we go. That's the final boss. Uh, it is a very epic final battle for an NES game, honestly. Very well done. And therefore, we see the Triforce of Kirch for the first time, and actually see the Triforce formulate for the very first time. This music is kind of weird, but I like it. Let's dance. You saved Hyrule, and you are a real hero. The end. Probably the only time Link and Zelda ever kiss. This is apparently a different Princess Zelda from the first game, though. I don't get that. But that is Zelda 2. It is definitely a drastically different game from the rest of the franchise. But that doesn't mean it's bad. Actually, the combat in this game is quite exhilarating. A little more intense than in the first game. The AI in general is also better, and the dungeons are actually quite nice to go through. I think it's a pretty fun game overall, with some pretty good music. But some slightly poor difficulty balancing. There's certain parts of the game that just randomly spike, and then it calms down a bit. It's not as balanced as the first game, and there are some parts of the game that can be seen as kind of unfair. It's not the whole game, though. It's only a few segments, and it does hurt the game a bit, but it's honestly a very fun game, even if it's nothing like the other Zelda games. Sometimes something a little different isn't bad at all. Sometimes it's what makes it stand out, and this game doesn't deserve hate. It is a fun game. And back then, there was nothing else to compare to, so people realized that too. Thanks a million. It is a fun game, but a very difficult one. Well, that's it. We'll see what I do next. Until then, this has been Tales from 109. Hope you've enjoyed watching as much as I've enjoyed playing. Have a nice day.